In the last podcast, I discussed why biodiversity is important. Now we're going to get into how we can actually measure what the diversity or the biodiversity of certain populations is so that we can say this area has a lot of biodiversity and this area doesn't have as much biodiversity. And that helps us to make those decisions about what ecosystems need to be preserved. So to calculate diversity, you actually use an equation. So you can get an actual number or value that tells you how diverse an area is. So what kinds of varieties of plants and animals and other living organisms are there. So I'm going to step you through this equation first and then give you an example of an actual problem where we use this equation. Diversity um, in this equation hopefully is you know things that you've used before. Okay, the variables should be something that you're familiar with. So if we say that we've got a big N times big N minus 1, our big N is going to be the total number of individuals in an ecosystem. So we need to count up all the individuals of whatever organisms it is you're looking at in an ecosystem, and that's our big N value. So if we have 100 total organisms in an ecosystem, this first line is going to look like 100, which is our big N, times 100 minus 1, which would be 99. So that would be our top value. The bottom um, variable that we're dealing with is the number of individuals of a species. So in this total value of big N, we might have 30 species. And species 1 might have a population of 40, so maybe it's 40 um, deer, where species 2 might have a population of 20, so maybe it's 20 oak trees. So we are going to have to calculate this value for every species individually because each species or each little n is going to have a different number. So let's say we're calculating, <clears throat> first of all, um, the total, remember, was 100 times 99, that's for the top, and we're doing those deer, so the little n for the deer is 20, times n minus 1, so that's 19, and that's just our deer value. But then we also want to know that oak tree value. So we still use 100, because that's still the total number of individuals, times 99, but our oak tree number is 10. Maybe there's 10 oak trees. And those 10 oak trees minus 1, the n minus 1, would be 9. So this value up here at the top for the deer is going to be different than this value down below for the oak. And the last step then is to put those all together. So once we calculate the deer value and the oak value, then we can add them all up. And that's what this little weird E-looking thing is. That's a sum symbol. So summing means adding them all up. So we'd add the deer value from that equation plus the oak value from that equation, and that is going to equal the overall diversity. All right, so we're going to do an example of this. As I said, I'm going to set it up for you. We're not going to calculate it all the way out, but I'm going to show you how to actually solve the problem. And then you'll have the skills you need to do your work in class when you'll actually calculate all, all these values out. All right, in our example, we're going to use a pond, a set of ponds. So it says table one below, which is the table you can see on this page, shows the number of individuals found in each of six species of aquatic plants in three ponds. So just let me point this out to you for a minute here. We've got three ponds across the top, pond A, B, and C, and we want to know which pond has the most biodiversity. Okay, the three different species that those ponds have in common, or sorry, the six different species those ponds have in common are here. So they all have plant A, or at least we counted it in all of them. Okay, they all have or counted species B, plant B, 
they all have had a count of species C, D, E, and F. Okay, so we know the numbers for those plants of those six species. So we need to go through and start to calculate then what the diversity of each pond is. And remember I said you're going to have to do each separate species and then add them up. First thing you need to do is the total. So we're starting pond A, and we're going to add these up for our totals. We've got 40 and 50 for 90. 45 is 135. 135 plus 28 is 173. 173 plus 25 is 198. And 198 plus 33 is 131. Okay, so our total for this pond, for pond A, N equals 131. I hope I calculated that right. If it's not exactly right, that's okay. I'm, what I'm most concerned about is you understand how to do this. So to find the N value, we added up all of these numbers. Okay, so big N equals 131. That's the top of our equation. Okay, now we've got to finish that up. Okay, so if our big N, get my pen back here, our big N right here is 131, then the top is 131 times 130. Because 131 minus 1 is 130. Now we've got to get the bottom of the equation. For each species, we need to know the total number of those individuals minus 1. Okay, so back to our example. The total number of species for A is 40. Oops. Get my pen back. Okay, 40 is the little n. So we're going to put 40 for that one. Little n minus 1 is 39, so put 39 for that one. So that's the bottom of our equation. So remember, the top was 131 times 130, and the bottom is 40 times 39. So when you calculate that out, that's going to give you a number, whatever it might be. Okay. Let's do another one. The, let's do 45 because I'll have more room for that one. So then you've got to figure out 50, which I'm assuming you can do on your own. Would be 50 would be your little n, so that would go on the bottom. Little n minus 1 would be 49, also on the bottom. And again, we always keep this same thing on the top, so 131 times 130. So each one of these values, okay, each one of these species, needs to have a number. Okay, you're going to have all sorts of numbers calculated out using the same equation. Big N times big N minus 1 divided by little n times little n minus 1. All right, so I'm going to pretend that I did this. I'm just going to make up some values. I think they end up being... Um, decimal, so I'm just going to make up some decimal values. Let's say you've divided out all of those different big ends and little ends by each other, and your values were the following. 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.9, 0 0.1, and another 0 0.2. Okay, so I divided them all out. The last step, remember, now is to sum these all up. So we add those all together. We have 0.5 plus 3 is 0.8, plus 0.2 is 1.0, plus 0.9 is 1.9, plus 0.1 is 2.0, and plus 0.2 is 2.2. So the sum of all of those is 2.2, and that is our diversity value. Now if I wanted to know 
which pond is more diverse, I'd have to do the same things with pond B and pond C. First find the N, then take N minus 1, divide by the number for each species of organisms, times N minus 1, and then sum up all those values for all your different species to get one diversity number. So as I said earlier, tomorrow in class, what you're going to be doing is using this equation to find the diversity of various populations. I have little dishes of beans, different types of beans that I'd set up for you. Each bean represents a different species. It would probably be easiest to set up a table kind of like this for yourself first. Okay, you're not going to have, you know, a variety of different environments to do at once. Instead, they'll just be one dish. It has a variety of different types of beans. So this could be bean one. Maybe those are black beans. This could be bean two. Maybe those are red beans. So forth and so on. So these are all your different beans. You'll need to count how many you have of each type and then do the whole equation. So that n minus n times n minus 1 divided by little n times little n minus 1 and then sum it all up. Remember, big N is your total beans. Little n is the beans of that type. So it's maybe all the black beans or all the red beans. That's it for this particular vodcast. Um, on your assignment tomorrow, Remember to keep yourself organized just like this and to show your work.